Let's have a look at the character of the mollusks. These are all mollusks. Most mollusks have a calcium carbonate shell in which the soft body of the animal is housed. The part which protrudes from the shell is largely the foot, although at the end of the foot in the snail is obviously the head. Here from underneath, the mouth is at the top left of the screen, and it's equipped with a rasping organ, which the snail can use to rasp its way through shells of, for example, in this case, an oyster, in order to eat the contents. The clam uses its foot to dig into sand quite often. And once it's in there, the clam feeds by filtering water between its shells. The food particles are filtered out of the water which comes into the shell by the gills. So the clam is a filter feeder. The particles of food move eventually to the mouth and are driven there by little cilia or whip-like structures which carry the microscopic food particles along. The pulsing of the foot is driving this clam into the sand. A very good device for protecting yourself from predators if you're a clam on a beach. Water is being emitted from the siphon of this clam as it digs itself in. The pecten, which is also a clam, can propel itself through the water for short distances by clapping its valves together. Mollusks reproduce by means of eggs and larvae, all of which are, of course, very small and light and be, can be carried large distances by favorable ocean currents. The octopus is a member of another kind of group of mollusks. It's related to the squids, and they're called cephalopods because the head, with its large eye, lies at the base of the foot, which is divided into tentacles. In the case of the squid, there are 10 tentacles. Here they're propelling themselves along by ejecting water in a jet-like fashion. The octopus has got eight tentacles, and they're equipped with suckers, which are very good for getting hold of prey and holding on until the prey is dead. The octopus can use its tentacles in order to move itself through the water, too. For protection, the octopus can extrude an inky fluid. The mollusks show just about every different way of living in the sea. Let's just review them quickly. Remember the snails, or the gastro pods as they're called. The snails live in two different ways. Those with the radula that grind through the shells of like oysters, for example, are carnivores. They eat the flesh of the oyster because they have a good, efficient radula, a good, efficient tooth-like organism for grinding through the shell. Those that don't have that tend to eat the organic material and the slime of the sea floor. They're what we call deposit feeders. They feed on the deposits on the sea floor. Then the clams, or the bivalves as we call them, those mollusks that have two shells that join together and form a hinged pair. The clams filter the water. They filter out organi organisms that they then pass to their mouth using the gills. So the clams are filter feeders, yet a third different kind of way of life that the mollusks have. Then think of the octopus and also the squids. The octopus and the squids have tentacles which they use for capturing prey such as crabs in the case of the octopus which they then eat. So the, uh, the cephalopods, as they're called, with the tentacles, are carnivores again. Carnivores of um, mobile uh, organisms. And the 
uh, the squids can swim rather like fish, so they can capture organisms in the main body of the, the water. A very wide variety of different kinds of lifestyles. The, we say that the mollusks have radiated. They've adapted to very many different kinds of ways of life, and they've radiated out from um, <coughs> a, a simple organism to very many varieties. Let's look at the mollusks that we've got here in the studio and identify those different ways of life. The cephalopods are typified by this very large coiled ammonite, as we call it. The internal structure can be shown by comparing that coiled shell with a recent relative that's been cut through. And here you can see that the shell consists of numerous chambers. And it's in this last chamber, this one here, that the organism lives. So in this fossil example, the organism would have lived in this last part here. This is this coiled shell is related to the octopuses and the squids. In other words, tentacles emerged from here. The organism had an eye, and it used those tentacles to catch prey that it could, it could see. So these organisms, these mollusks, the cephalopods, uh, are carnivores, right? They eat other organisms. This is another cephalopod, a long straight one in this case, and the chambers run across like this. And the tentacles would have emerged out of this end, the far end. The chambers are filled with gas, and they help to keep the, uh, the cephalopod afloat. Now, let's look at the bivalves, at the clams. Here are some. This is a fossil oyster. Here is one shell, or valve as we call it. Here is the second, a smaller one. This is also a kind of oyster. And the shells fit together in a V fashion. Here is one shell, the other is there, and they would open and close like so. Those are both fossils from Jurassic strata. These are also bivalves, and if they were a good pair, they'd fit together like so. This bivalve might have buried itself in the sand like one of those that, you, that you've just seen and filtered the water. So those clams are filter feeders. They filter the water. This gastropod, or snail, with the high, tall spire, might have lived in one of two ways. It might have lived as a deposit feeder, eating the mud on the sea floor or the organic material in it, or it might have rasped its way.